here we are. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. It's a given Tuesday, the 28th. And we're here with Rupmati Khandakar. She joins us from very far away. And we're going to talk about uh, the effect that Roe v. Wade, the reversal of Roe v. Wade, has had on global perspectives. This is very important. Good morning, Rupmati, or whatever time it is in your place in the world. Good morning on Wednesday, 29th of June. And uh, so it's early morning here. And uh, it's, it's an amazing pleasure to be on Think Tank Hawaii and talk to you about this landmark decision, we can say. And it's going to um, change everything, everything, uh, everywhere. So let's talk about it and discuss it in such a way that we can get a broader perspective. Of this. Yes, absolutely. So when, so when the SCOTUS gave a 6-3 majority, it was stunning, wasn't it? It, it just shocked the world shock, disbelief, and that's, that summarizes what we are going to speak about right now. So let's go, Jay. Okay, let's, go, Jay. Uh, well, at first, let's talk about your perspective, okay, how you feel about this, and then we'll do a, do a, a geographical survey of how others that you are familiar with, how they feel about it in different countries. What's your perspective, Rubmati? Correct. Now, when you uh, talk about this uh, judgment, it's something of a judicial norm trespassing into a personal norm. So uh, when you compromise into a person's personal space, it's like you can trespass into somebody's house, but this is far more personal and taking away the rights. Um, um, Jay, one line summary I can give you is it's not an event. Uh, having a child is a process. So when you are forcing it on someone, you are uh, technically giving that person um, a process to go through. It's not an event that they can abandon. And when they abandon it, it's going to bring in more social evils. So uh, you have to have willingness to get into this parenthood, uh, both male, female, everybody. And um, the larger perspective on this is that it's a constitutional right to decide what you can do with yourself. Religion, yes, you cannot harm life. That is a um, the the other side of uh, the coin, but there are medical uh, emergencies which require uh, the abortions. Everything has to be taken care of. You can't make such a one-sided judgment. And when there was a judgment, they should have amended it rather than scrapped it. By scrapping it, they are bringing in a lot of legalities. Um, uh, you know, there's a list of uh, companies who are willing to pay for the women to go out of the country. So this brings in disharmony in the society. You're disturbing the decorum of the society. The integrity of the judicial system is being questioned. How can you believe that they are going to go uh, uh, straight in other decisions when they give such a one-sided against female uh, decision? There's a loss of confidence in the political system and there's a disturbance of the entire social decorum. So it's a far-reaching landmark and we need to do something to repeal it, to amend it, it can't go on like this. Because America is the beacon of freedom. We are the hegemon which directs the international global system towards democracy, towards personal rights. And if you, uh, half of your population are women, if you're going to curtail their rights in such a, only, you know, only the United States, Poland and Nicaragua have reduced the uh, female access to abortion rights. The rest of the countries are all moving forward. In India, we have uh, a reduction of uh, this abortion control because of uh, the, uh, the ratio of women, the preference of a male child. But, uh, you, but uh, or you cannot find out the gender of the child. These are the, um, what is that? These are the restrictions that come in place. But to totally tell a woman that you cannot go through unwanted pregnancy, that is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. No, no. That was reflected in all the uh, reactions that came, isn't it? From, from what you say, and I want to explore that a little bit, um, it sounds like abortion is permitted in most or nearly all of the world. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. They do. They do have medical access. But now in U.S., the point is that you have a penalty if you go for an abortion. So the health, the entire healthcare system comes under scrutiny if you help out a person in need. 
So you are technically charged under felony. So that becomes a very complicated issue because health workers, they are designed, programmed mentally to save lives. So by a medical abortion, if you're saving the life of the mother, they would want to go through it. Now you're endangering everybody. So two lives are at stake with your one uh, act or one, one law. So uh, that, is, that is repulsive for the society. So, okay, that being the case, um, I imagine, and, and you are in India right now and you've traveled and you've seen other places on your current trip. So uh, <clears throat> uh, I imagine that people uh, everywhere know about Roe v. Wade and the reversal of Roe v. Wade by the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, and you've probably talked to a lot of people. I mean, I can tell you that everybody that I know in the U.S. is talking about this news. Um, it would, it's a fair statement to say that everybody in India and the places you've been uh, are also talking about this news. Am I right? The, the Roe v. Wade, exactly, people may not know about it. Or, you know, it doesn't have that much of far-fetching consequences. We will see this, uh, these effects in about, say, five years' time, Jay, when you have a black market or an underground uh, healthcare system that takes care of the unwanted pregnancies away from the justice uh, judicial system. You know, you will have a, a whole new uh, system which comes into play away from the eyes of the political system. So this... It requires five years to a decade. In India, uh, you see if there is no restriction on abortion. Uh, if you don't want the child or if there is uh, unwanted medical, uh, this, they do go through it. So uh, it's progressive here and it's gone. Uh, you know what Boris Johnson said? It's a big step backwards. So yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, so that's if what. somebody in India or some, you know, some developing country or any country um, is um, learns about Roe v. Wade, the reversal of Roe v. Wade, um, and, uh, and finds that the U.S. is taking a big step backward. Um, what do they think? What is their reaction? What is their reaction to the decision of the Supreme Court? And, and maybe more important, what is their reaction to the United States? And I asked this question you know, uh, mindful of the fact that um, you know, the United States uh, is, is world famous for having a locked up Congress, um, for having, a, you know, an argument uh, between the Republicans and the Democrats on, on basic measures of uh, public policy. So what is, what is the reaction of an individual in India or elsewhere um, to the reversal of Roe v. Wade? Roe v. Wade, when we say that it's, uh, you know, it's constrained the liberty of a woman only, it is shocking for people in India to understand that somewhere where they dreamt of the American dream, freedom, you can do whatever you want and everything is uh, available and better healthcare system, in that you have a big restriction and on a majority of the population, you can't uh, have liberty, equality and fraternity uh, with limitations or with restrictions. It's, it's like comparing it to the, um, you see, the, the Red Scott uh, and uh, Sandman, uh, Sanford uh, Agreement in uh, Judgment in 1857, when they said people of African descent cannot be American citizens. So how can you have such a sweeping uh, decision which, which just cuts out one part of your population from any liberty, equality, and fraternity? So men have higher rights why do you give women voting rights when they can choose their political leaders, but they cannot choose what happens to themselves? I told you, religion has to be respected. Right to life is for everybody, but that life has to be taken care of by a, 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 a woman or a, a father. The mother-father, if they are not capable of going through uh, bringing up the child, they would prefer to not have the child. So, and you know, they, this is. Uh, the beginning of a series of uh, decisions which may come on the LG LGBT uh, community or the minorities or say the immigrants, uh, if they can make such a sweeping decision on American citizens, you can, 
you can just imagine what they can do to migrants if they want to one day. Isn't it? Immigrants can be just swept off. We don't want or some. It gives a uncertainty in the system. You come to America for stability. You come for a better life. You come for a developed life. And from the developing world, when you talk about America, you talk about all these things. There's going to be equality, better healthcare, better education, better lifestyle. But when you are under felony charges for uh, not have wanting a, a baby, uh, so that is regressive. One thing that's uh, common around the world is the notion of family. And you referred to that a minute ago. <clears throat> and, um, you know, family, to, for a society to be stable, fam the family institution must be stable. Once the family institution declines, then the society, uh, this is my view anyway, then the society must decline. Um, and it, it sounds to me like what you are saying, and I would absolutely agree with it, um, is that if you restrict these days, especially in times when people um, can be poor and can not have the resources to raise a child, if you restrict their right to an abortion when it already exists, um, then you're undermining the family. Okay, and people all over the world understand and respect the family. Um, so if in the United States, we intrude on the decisions, just as you said, of the family. We're intruding on the institution of marriage, the ability of a husband and wife to make family decisions. And I would imagine that people in, in every country would react that way. Do you agree? Yes, absolutely. Point on, Jay. Uh, you see, in America, we have nuclear family. But in India and, uh, say, the developing world or... Uh, Somewhere in America, too, we have extended families or joint families where people live together and decisions are made by everybody. So there has to be a respect to your elders. There has to be a consideration of your youngsters. There has to be consideration of the family income, what can be done for the house, everything. There are a lot of considerations. Now, if you say that, uh, you know, it's a wholesome process. But now in America, when you have a single person trying to make a decision and the government trying to monitor that person, it gets very restrictive for them because there is a, a advertisement of absolute freedom. Isn't it? In America, it's advertised to be absolute freedom. You can do whatever you want as long as you don't uh, trespass on the liberty of others. So your restrictions are restricted to your... Now, if you asking the judicial and political system to come inside a, a woman's body that is going to have far-fetching uh, uh, reactions because um, as i told you at the beginning of the program jay it's not an event it's a process and parents have to be willing if if the if the father abandons the child what does the mother do? then you'll have abandoned children you'll have you know you'll have a social system where you have uh, uh, free mongers and loafers running around and creating uh, unwanted social elements which will create drugs. You know, it, it's a pyramid which will keep on uh, building up. So we have to understand that it has to be cut at the root and this has to be amended, taken back, repealed. You have to have some uh, logistical changes in this. This can't work this way. It is absolutely uh, not feasible to go ahead. So to, 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 con to continue on that particular track, if I have a, a given family and uh, the government intrudes on my decision to have an abortion, my family decision to have an abortion, uh, in a country where mm, people don't have a lot of money um, and they, 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 they would have decided to, to have an abortion because they couldn't afford the child, and now they're forced to have the child and the child is therefore unwanted. Would you say that, the, and, and you, your comment implied or expressly indicated um, that, that uh, if you put that pressure on people and they don't have the money, you're undermining the family. What you're saying is uh, to the husband, for example, um, if you were thinking of leaving your wife, if you were thinking of abandoning this unwanted child, um, this is going to uh, exacerbate that possibility. This is going to make it 
more likely that you will leave your wife and because you can't afford to have the child. Uh, and what's the process, for example, in India or in some other developing country? In India, there is a, it's a traditional society. We do have, it's not a free society. Uh, there are restrictions of family. There is restriction of tradition. There is restriction of uh, monogamous uh, marriage. There is no polygamy. There is no polygamous partners. So you have a restrictive uh, cocoon uh, from the beginning. So the women in India know their limits uh, more than if you get an American woman and you tell her you can't do this and you can just you have to continue for seven births with the same person, they will not like it. But an Indian woman would love that because it's for seven. Uh, you think that for seven births, you will be with the same person. So that kind of mentality comes in mind. And, you know, if you tell this person you cannot do this, it'll, she will be more willing then an American woman who will, who's living free for decades, who's seen her parents live in freedom, who's seen her grandparents live in freedom, and suddenly a restriction is brought on her, on her personal choice to bring up a child, that becomes, they will not listen, Jay. They will not listen. You will have self-abortions. You'll have uh, them going to witch doctors. You'll have them going to, you know, anybody who will help them in this time of crisis. Because at that time, the woman is at her most vulnerable uh, worst. So um, instead of support, if you give her restrictions, she's going to go the wrong way. Mm. She's going to abandon the child. That's the only uh, solution that they come up with. Well, let, let's talk about abandonment of unwanted children. You know, in the United States, according to the Supreme Court, the, there will be someone who will take that child. Uh, that child will be able to survive, uh, be organizations and individuals who will act as a kind of safety net for that child. I, I don't really believe that's true, but that, that's what they apparently think, that there'll be some way that the unwanted child will be, will be cared for in the United States in the wake of, of their decision. Um, but it's different uh, in another country. It's different in countries, for example, where there are few resources outside the family where there are no institutional possibilities to take care of an un unwanted child. And an unwanted child, the life of an unwanted child is a much harder life than it would be um, you know, if, if there were such institutions. So what about that in India and uh, developing countries where a child is unwanted, um, where the child is um, you know, put out of the family? What happens to that child? Who will care for that child? Uh, what kind of a life will that child have? Uh, yeah, Jay, in our previous program on democracy, when we spoke about democracy as a political norm, and we had this question of poverty being uh, in India, uh, poverty is an economic norm. Uh, you know, there is a difference. Even poor parents would, they would, whatever they have resources, they will give it to that child. They will try to raise the child. But even if that standard of living is low, they will try to keep up with that. Abandoning traditionally is not very uh, a viable option in India. They continue carrying the child ahead, uh, letting go of their own um, uh, intake for the child's uh, upbringing. Now, this sacrificing parents uh, is a part of traditional society in India. Means you do with whatever you have, limited resources you have, or uh, is a part of the developing world. You know, you'll have, uh, in China, you'll have four children who will be living with their parents. After marriage also, they will live with their parents. They will take care of their parents. How many children in America would like to do that? They would like to go out on their own and live their own life after 18. So it's not a give and take relationship. It's not a mutual understanding relation. It's like, I'm on my own, you are on your own. So that has been, that has been the form of society. It's not wrong. It's not uh, uh, any way. It's their, their way of life, uh, their lifestyle that is uh, being, uh, you know, uh, harnessed. But you can't, when you are asking them to go in the opposite direction, living with no restriction and living with complete restriction, it's like a paradox that they have to pass through. They can't really go through this I mean, a girl uh, living in America uh, would not have, would not follow the same uh, restrictions that a girl in India would. 
that's my uh, <laughs> that's my one liner because of the mindset because of the traditions because of the kind of society you live in there are restrictions everywhere but in america abortion is a right which is a fundamental right which has been taken away it's like something like you can't speak so that way so uh, you're skilled in economics and and you've written in economics uh, i just wonder if you have thoughts what happens in a given country that follows you know this rule that limits um, abortions um what happens to the economy uh, if for example india would follow um, the reversal of Roe v. Wade um, and would limit abortions, what would happen to its economy, all these things considered? Can you imagine the debate, Jay, if we had, if uh, China had passed such a law, we would have had, a, or India would have passed such a law, there would have been communal riots, there would have been, you know, a bombing of <laughs> everything. But uh, this is a very restrictive, <laughs> the, uh, a muted uh, reaction to this uh, judgment. If it had happened in any of these countries which we are living in, the reaction would have been far stronger than what you're having with banners. You know, it's it would have been far stronger because of, because of the sheer population that is for sure, but uh, also because of the number of people. I mean, uh, who would uh, be affected by this? Uh, you can't have abandoned children in developing countries, but if you have abandoned children in America, you'll have foster homes to take care of. And then you have problems of the foster home and everything. But I feel nobody can take care of a child as much as a parent can. So I think parents' willingness to take care of a child would bring the child up in a far better environment than foster, uh, foster homes. So willingness of a mother's love is unprecedented in any form of love, isn't it? So if the mother is away from the child, how will the child keep her? I mean, you can't imagine a world without mothers and ch children becoming being together. So yeah. it's, yeah. <laughs> so it puts stress certainly on, on both sides of that equation. Um, but let me ask you this. This is really an interesting you know, notion that up till this point, as you mentioned, America has been, uh, you know, the city on the hill, the beacon for civil liberties and the rights of the individual. Um, and now it's very clear from this decision that we're no longer in that in that place. Um, we are imposing on women, imposing on their rights, uh, uh, going going backward, as you said, uh, taking a huge step backward. And because it's the Supreme Court and they're there for life, <clears throat> that's likely to last for a long time and have a profound effect. So up till this point, and since um, you know the end of World War II, the Marshall Plan, uh, the United States has been a leader, uh, you know, in in the global liberal order, uh, in national and international morality, and so there's been a phenomenon where. Um, many countries, if not most countries in the world, follow the lead of the United States. Um, on this occasion, for this issue, it seems to me it's not necessarily the same phenomenon. Do you think that um, developing countries, India and many, many other countries, which now allow abortion, will change their minds, will say, wait, maybe the Supreme Court is right? Maybe we have to change our laws. Maybe we have to outlaw abortion also. What do you think? Is there any possibility of that? Absolutely not, Jake, absolutely not. It's a beacon, the hegemon is a beacon of for democracy in the liberal world order, but not for this one. I think uh, everybody will pass the United States on this one and uh, let women fight out for their rights over there and maybe help rather then uh, change uh, uh, their own laws. But this is a ultra regressive um, uh, decision. It's not about conservatism and liberalism. It's about fundamental rights of the, even the child. You are endangering the child by giving unwanted uh, pregnancy to parents. So uh, a child has to be full of joy, brings joy to parents, to grandparents, to family, to everybody. 
it cannot have any any sadness associated with it so this gives uh, you have a x over your neck uh, of the political system of the united states the judicial system of the united states that's a hard pill to swallow Jay. and um, it, it's uh, going to be uh, literally a disturbance of social decorum in the personal space so uh, they should pass gun laws they should pass better laws which will um, not uh, which will save lives well, you know, it sounds to me uh, like uh, inherent in all of that, in, in the fact that the United States can seem to pass meaningful gun laws, that the United States, um, you know, is losing touch with um, with free and fair voting and democracy in general, the democracy that it has sold to so many countries yeah. in the world. Yes. And now right. this, uh, you know, the, the withdrawal of human rights to, to half the population um, this is qu quite remarkable. and. Uh, Aside from the question of whether um, other countries uh, will emulate uh, this particular decision, which I think is clear they will not, um, but what about the view of other countries and people around the world um, now that we have this withdrawal of human rights, of women's rights? I mean, there was a, um, a, a journalist in, 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 in Ireland about, I guess it was during the Trump time, um, where he said in his Irish newspaper, he said, the emotion we should feel for the United States is clear. It's pity. We should feel pity for what is happening in the United States. But I, I think I wanted to ask you that question. I mean, all these things are happening. And now this, what reaction will the world have to the United States? We have a president who was almost impeached twice, who kept three judges who have uh, smashed the uh, acts of conservatism on uh, this judgment. So now, uh, what? who are you trying to please? That is the question. If you're talking of the general population, um, it's not pleased. Uh, they are going to travel there to other places and uh, get their work done. Uh, this is just about the poor people who don't have access to travel abroad, don't have access to uh, higher medical fees, they are the ones who are going to suffer. So uh, it's just that um, this kind of a decision uh, hurts marginalized sections of the society more than the general population. So um, the United States has to understand that it's leading the way. And when it takes these steps backward, the other countries are stunned. The only Poland and Nicaragua are helping uh, are, are with on the same platter as uh, the United States, make some progressive decisions. Voting rights were hailed as such a big thing. And then you taking away from someone uh, a right is not, I told you, it's not appeasement of religion. They can, uh, it is wrong to abort a life. But if it goes for medical reasons, give space for that. Give uh, space for marginalized, uh, a parents, somebody who doesn't want at all. So give space for that. If you do these uh, amendments, if you give this maneuvering space, it will have a better impact rather than a, a pan decision to uh, restrict everybody. So uh, that is needed. You know, Jay, just a little bit of twerking of the law is needed, necessary. What about um, the way people see this on a, on, a, on a racial basis? I mean, there are some commentators who feel that the reversal of Roe v. Wade is, uh, is racist um, because the people who don't have the resources are more often than not the disadvantaged and uh, the minority races, if you will. Um, and at the, at the Supreme Court, you know, at the heart of its decision is actually acting against them making it impossible for them to do what they want to do because uh, the others do have the, the resources to travel and get an abortion elsewhere. Uh, what do people think about that? Uh, uh, there is an underlying proportionality between poverty and population, isn't it, Jay? The poorer countries do have higher populations. So uh, uh, you have these marginal sections of uh, the American society who have more kids. Maybe the uh, white White people will have fewer kids, but the black or uh, the, uh, what is that? Um, minority immigrants will have four to five kids. So uh, for them, it becomes a bit of an issue. 
isn't it? Because they do not have access to that health care, which uh, a family of two living with uh, one child will have. So they are going to be the ones who are going to suffer when you have forced uh, uh, laws on them. So that's why I think it is uh, said to be more on the marginalized population. Yeah, one last thing I wanted to ask you about, and you referred to this early on in our conversation today, is that um, if you have the resources and you would like to have an, an abortion, uh, then you would go to a place, use your resources to go to a place where it's possible. And, um, you know, indeed, uh, there, are, there are liberal states now like California and maybe Hawaii uh, that would, you know, make it easier for someone from a red state uh, to come and have an abortion. And that seems to be um, the likelihood in a number of states uh, now. But, but it also happens on an international level. For example, India has very advanced medicine. Uh, yes. And other countries in, in Asia, they have advanced medicine. Um, so do you think, um, Rupmati, that um, there will be countries that step up and say, why don't you have a vacation here? And we will offer you, <laughs> we will offer you the medical services you might have you might have wanted in your home state. Do you think that will happen? Is there any talk of that? Um, do you think it'll happen in India or other places with advanced Western medicine? Just taking commercialization to a whole new different level, isn't it? There are people Jay who have not traveled outside their own lane, isn't it? We are uh, we are the privileged. Uh, Lord bless Lord who can travel from country to country, hop from country to country, but not many people can afford to do these things. So for them to travel from one lane to another or say one city to another is a task. Uh, so we have to understand that um, they are the ones who actually need uh, abortions when they cannot raise, they don't have enough resources to raise a child. So um, for them, <laughs> it would the advertisement would not matter, would it? They would not uh, <laughs> that <laughs> so uh, that that's what so for uh, commercializing uh, abortion would lead to um, I mean what were the Supreme Court judges thinking when they did this uh, they have to think about the wide widespread repercussions of this it's not just about pleasing the conservative side of uh, uh, ideology it's about um, basic human rights so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would, uh, <clears throat> I would, uh, I would uh, sort of summarize our discussion today: is what were they thinking? What exactly were they what? thinking? And and I know. it goes beyond basic human rights. It also goes to America's um, brand, its franchise in the world, America's um, idealism to the way um, the world sees America. And uh, if they had been thinking about that, they would never have done this because it seems to me we have we have lost our leadership, um, not only because of this case, but right now in large part because of this case. Yeah. Correct. Correct. You have to have a political uh, order, a political system which takes note of this and says, hey, wait on. You cannot do this. And, uh, you know, you have to have a strong leader. We are lacking that, aren't we, Jay? We are really lacking the strong leadership that we needed, uh, just as it would have gone and stopped the uh, trespassing into Ukraine. Let me let's just go far-fetched into that. <laughs> and uh, same way, they should have stopped this trespassing into women's rights. So uh, a political system which says to the judicial system, do not cross your limits and uh, which protects the right of the people. That's what the political system does. A judicial system gives justice to people. Now we have both of them who are taking away basic human rights. Who do we go to? So uh, that way, who, who, who to ask what yeah. about this? Yeah, yeah. Well, there was a, a great sign at one of the protests of money mm -hmm. that said, uh, <clears throat> America, uh, the land of gun care, and health control. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> that's that's too too straightforward, isn't it? Right now. <laughs> well, thank you, Rupati. <laughs> thank you so much. A great discussion. Thank, thank you, you Rupati. We'll talk to you again about other international uh, uh, issues and developments. Always forward.
Thank Take you so care. much. So much. Looking forward. Yep. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.